morning guys i'm siobhan a second year medical resident oh my gosh it is so snowy and slippery holy moly right now i'm actually on a visiting elective which means i go to a different city a different hospital and i get to experience a, a different medical culture so right now i'm doing rheumatology and i'm heading to clinic i've rented a car i'm living in a new place so it's a bit of an adjustment and an adventure so let's see what today brings Today I'm working with Dr. Pope. She's an internationally renowned rheumatologist and she's an incredible advocate for her patients. So let's go and meet her and you guys can find out a little bit more about what rheumatologists do. Hi, I'm Dr. Janet Pope. I'm a rheumatologist here at St. Joe's Healthcare in London, Ontario, and I'm a professor of medicine. Here's what a rheumatologist does. We see patients with inflammatory arthritis. We also see things like osteoarthritis and tendonitis. We can inject joints, but we also are general internists, so we look and see what's going on of autoimmune inflammation and treating that with various medications. So we do a lot of different things. So if you could talk to Dr. House MD, who always says, it's not lupus. It's not lupus. What would you say to him? So for Dr. House, I'd say, first of all, you're really crusty and you have to have better bedside manner. So you're funny, but you're very cynical. Uh, rheumatology sees a lot of things, but lupus is still kind of rare, one in a thousand. So we have hundreds of patients with lupus because of large practices, but it's not lupus, but I'd still tell him, I think he needs a better bedside manner and he should do some rheumatology training and he'd be even better. The first patient I'm seeing is a follow-up appointment for rheumatoid arthritis. So I start out by reading all their previous clinic notes and reviewing the most recent lab work. Then I head in and see the patient and hear how they've been doing recently. I do a physical exam and then I go and find Dr. Pope and I present her with a summary of all my findings and put forward a plan that I think is most appropriate for this patient. So this is the moment of truth. Does Dr. Pope agree with what I think? And if she doesn't, honestly, it's just a learning opportunity and I get to learn from her expertise. Finally, we go in and see the patient together, make a plan and then send the patient on their way. The next patient's coming in for an urgent appointment for a flare of their psoriatic arthritis. And the thing that's bothering them the most is a really swollen knee. So um, our plan is to do an injection. So we're gonna be injecting some steroid into the knee to help decrease the inflammation so that then they can do some physio and sort of get back to their normal schedule while we're adjusting their main medications. So I'm mixing in freezing agent called lidocaine with the steroid. This allows the patient to get some immediate relief because the steroid actually takes a bit of time to kick in before it starts decreasing the inflammation or at least until the patient starts feeling it. Okay, so you've got a moment where there are no patients waiting to be seen. So I've got three to dictate, three patients that I've seen and haven't dictated yet. So I'm gonna take this moment to at least dictate one or two so I don't have too big of a pile at the end of the day. Please enter your user ID followed by the pound sign. I feel like we start to hear the same things over and over so many times. Please enter your site code followed by the pound key. Please enter your work type. Now this part gets confidential, so. Okay, one dictation done. I'm going to double check and see if there are any patients waiting before I get started on a second one and I'll just start a pile of dictations to do. <laughs> the next patient is a consult. It's a young woman with arthritis NYD, meaning not yet diagnosed. They're still not yet diagnosed, but we're getting closer to it. So they've had this persistent swelling in their hands and it sounds a lot like rheumatoid arthritis because it's in both hands, feet are a bit painful, but it's so early on that it's hard to tell. So unfortunately the patient's not walking away with a diagnosis, but we're gonna get closer by doing x-rays and doing some blood work, ruling out some infections and making sure it's not any other type of condition. Um, anyway, I love this part. The thing that sucks though is that 
like by the time this patient comes back into clinic, I'll, I'll be back on a different rotation and I won't actually get to follow up on this. So one day when I actually get to follow up with patients long term, that'll, that'll be really satisfying. So it's a super diverse clinic day. I just finished seeing a patient with psoriatic arthritis. So um, they have psoriasis, a type of skin condition, but then on top of that, they end up getting arthritis that's related to the psoriasis. So there are a ton of different types of arthritis. It's not as easy as just like what your grandmother has. So that's our job is figuring out what's causing it and then we can treat it. Okay, so the rheumatology fellows, so the ones who are specializing in rheumatology after internal medicine, have agreed to answer some questions and tell you guys what it's like in rheumatology. <laughs> I can't believe it went. Okay, stop hitting it. <laughs> okay, do you guys know what these things were actually used for? X-rays. Yeah, these were x-ray machines before and now it's just used for a critical message. Okay. okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please include that? <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you think people are most scared of when they come in? Like, what diagnosis do you think people are most scared they have? Lupus. It's not lupus. Yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> because there are um, scary images on the internet, and Google is great, but it's also terrifying, um, terrifying because you. Google lupus and you see always the worst things that can happen and people when you give them the diagnosis of lupus they immediately ask you am I going to look like that and you have to calmly tell them that no we have good medications to make sure you don't have those symptoms and if even if you do we can control things. If you were diagnosed with an autoimmune disease would you Google it? I think it's a cruel double-edged sword because <laughs> everyone wants to know, but you kind of know that the internet is full of terrifying versions. My answer would be yes, you just have to find the right sources. Yeah. And so you have to be careful in doing so and kind of try to gather whether what you're looking at is something that the medical world would somewhat agree with. Okay, so clinic finished way earlier than I was expecting, actually. We were efficient, and I just finished dictating my pile of charts. And now, the other part of rheumatology is um, consults and seeing patients in the hospital. So I'm gonna try to find May. I think she's one of the fellows who's on call. Uh, May. May. Hey, Siobhan, how are you? Good, you're on call, right? I am. Okay, so what situation? Well, uh, I'm just going to dictate these charts for tonight, and uh, today we haven't had any consults, so you and I are probably off for the night. <laughs> okay, that is so different than internal medicine call. When you guys have seen me 26 hours in the hospital, there's something called home call, and that's a rheumatology call. So you get called in when you need to go, but otherwise you don't have to just sleep in the hospital for no reason. All right, guys, done for the day. I want to give a huge thank you to Dr. Pope and to the amazing fellows who have contributed to this video. It was so much fun to have them here. I never want to go to the gym after a day of clinic, so I have left my stuff in the car. There's no excuse. I have to go and do it. So you guys are my witness. I'm going to go there now. Um, Anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see lots more videos like this. And otherwise, I'll be chatting with you guys next week. So, bye for now.